Well guys, welcome back to another mini machine shop. I'm Dave. Alright, as here you can see, I made a little tray. We're all collets. Um, I'll be showing the set here coming up in this video sequence. But first I want to take you over to the mini mill because I want to show, uh, what is his name, James Kirk? Kirk James, one or the other. He's really interested in the mini palette, so I just wanted to shoot a little bit and talk about it. So here it is. All right, here we are at the mill, and I wanted to just show this a little bit in the video. This is called a mini palette, and James Kirk, I guess, is really interested in it. He's, we've been emailing back and forth. Um, you can probably YouTube uh, mini palette, and I bet you you'll find tons of videos on it. Almost every shop I've seen has one of these. It's great for holding down small parts, but what I usually do is I'll put parallels in there and I'll clamp it down and then I know you know I'm all squared up here for cutting things off um, and there's well, all the clamps here Oop, these two clamps are absolutely identical as far as uh, no they're not not those two it's these two <laughs> as far as where these holes are but inevitably there's always one spot where the hole just doesn't make it so you can probably see that hole is in the center of those two so I can ship this guy a little bit further to hold down a part. Now you were asking um, what this little guy was and this is just a simple little guy I can mount here or here but what it's used for is if I want to say cut a part at 60 ooh, 60 degrees. I go up against that and then I can put my part in there. Let me grab one of these guys. Hang it off the edge, clamp it down, and just machine it off. So I do have the entire um, set here of angle blocks. So if I wanted to do a 20 degree, let me just take this guy out of here. There's 20 degrees. Put it up against there again, hang it out. Well, it's not really that long, so I'd probably put this guy up on top of something and so I could mill it off. But that's basically what this guy is all about. It's really, oh, keeps falling in there. It's really a useful tool for playing, like I said, with small parts. So, it, not that much to it. It does take a long time to make because there's like 33 holes that you got to drill, tap, and countersink. And these guys, that's steel. And I just threaded that, block tied it in there. So all, yeah, all the threaded stuff is steel. All right, that's enough on that. All right, now, as you know, I do a lot of run out, and for some reason I'm obsessed with run out. So the rest of this video is going to be me beating a chuck to death. So here we go. Well, the metric set of collets did arrive. Box is a little crushed, but let's see what happened on the inside. Well, the contents were undamaged. There's the whole metric set, 20 of them. And same good quality. Really nice. And I had made a chart of all the sizes so I can stick the metric ones in between all the uh, imperial ones so I'll have hopefully every size that I should ever need so that's it metric set $90 alright I was watching the last video that I just published and I'm looking at this indicator and it looked like the indicators moving in the video so I wanted to reset it up and clamp down on the arm here, make sure everything's rock solid. And I'm getting the same reading, but the interesting thing is if I just tap on the bench, I mean that's, if you're trying to machine a perfect surface and things move that easily, I mean, what am I getting anyway? I think about two tenths. But even you tap on the head, and it moves quite a bit. It's coming back to the same spot. The table, 
is pretty solid. And the interesting thing is if I grab the table and pull it towards me, boom. So yeah, there's that problem with the, um, the nut or the lead screw. But I can push real hard here and nothing happens in here. Pretty much so nothing. It comes back to the same spot. So, uh, back on the vise. Yeah, yeah, you can get. And I know the forces when you're doing a cut are tr have to be tremendous. So everything must be flexing. So I guess for a mini mill, a cheap, you know, inexpensive guy, this is probably <laughs> as good as it's going to get. All right, just wanted to show you guys that some food for thought. All right, I just ordered a 30D. Uh, Jacob's Chalk off of eBay and it takes a 3 8 24 thread and I want to do this for the mini mill I had this one um, but I don't like it because of the black I could probably clean it up or take it off but I'm looking all over eBay and Amazon and I can't find a nice one and it hit me hey Dave why don't you just make one <laughs> half inch 10 18 and just faced it off need to clean up the edge there and then I'll just uh, scotch bright it down and cut the other end, make the threads, and then show you guys. All right, later. All right, there it is, turned down, ready for threading. And if you can, I don't know if you can see down in here, there the new um, saddle stop is in there. So and it worked nicely; it didn't jam up. Because the other ones, you get chips in front of the saddle, and then all of a sudden your depth is shallow. So with this, it didn't happen, which is nice. Ah, take that guy out of there. Yeah, I definitely have to put the alignment pins in here. And drop it down. <laughs> Yuck, everything's a mess here. Trying to dust off some of the chips and stuff. All right, so that worked. Um, just need to chamfer it and then set up for threading. I right, just wanted to show a close up here. One of my secrets is before threading, you got to bevel this, take it really sharp and deep, because when you're done, it looks correct. So try it out yourself, guys. Do over what you think you need, and then watch how it turns out. Well, so much for that attempt. <laughs> the problem was trying to tap it. On the lathe, it just starts spinning in the collet. So I couldn't hold it to keep the tap on going on straight. So I had to take it out, put it in a vise. But the problem is the tap went crooked. So I don't have any equipment to do this with. That would have been nice because I was almost there. Just couldn't hold it. I couldn't thread it any further too. Well, uh, back to the drawing board. Well, even though this was a complete failure, two things occurred to me. One, you could have run out in a chuck because of the threads. It's not seating completely flat on there. And it doesn't take much because this isn't that crooked and you could see that how much that chuck was wobbling. The other thing is on this guy, the die needs to be held absolutely flat with this. So with this guy, I need to run it back so that I know this can't pivot. And I need some way of making sure that the die is held in there. So I think what I have to do, let me take this thing out. It's not that thick. But I think I have to tap some holes here and put some fingers that will hold the die straight because if it cocks I'm going to get crooked threads and it might have cocked when I was starting it and that's what happened I don't know so there's a learning curve folks doing some experimenting if you guys build one of these it just it just needs a lot of force and it holds it in there absolutely square you cannot move it for anything so change out from the thumb knob that I had to a set screw and make sure you're absolutely because it's octangular make sure you're hitting the flat surface in here before you tighten the screw down all right and like I said I a video a long time ago when I was given this test indicator 
I knew one day it was going to be an angle where it needed. Now you guys can't see the needle, but I did run this because I was thinking about my comment when I said um, if your arbor is crooked, your check's going to have a run out. So I'm thinking the other way around, and uh, sure enough, on this surface, I do have one thousandths run out when I run it. The needle's real jumpy too. It's like exactly. Exactly one thousand front up. So I'm wondering if I should <laughs> do something with that face. Let me try cleaning it and see what happens. Come on, release. There we go. Get that out of the way. Get some of the scotch bright. I definitely shined it up. <laughs> I can turn some light on, maybe it'll help you guys better. Yeah, that shined it out. It's clean now. Now let's see what the run on is. Carefully get this guy in there. There we go. Oh, yeah. All right. I've got a reading. And let's see if the run out's the same. Yep, it looks like it. Ah, it goes slower. It's going from halfway over that. I can't tell. Move this so it's in a different spot. It's hitting that one. And it's hitting that one. Still 1,000th run out. It's kind of a junk chuck. So I'm wondering if I machine this, whether it'll straighten it out. Um, let me set it up with the arbor and see if the gauge pin's got a 1,000th run out. All right, let me see if I can zoom in on the indicator here. Mm, wrong way. A little bit more. A little bit more. Well, I hope you can see it. I don't know. Yeah, there's some light on it. All right, let's see what it's going to do. All right, go. Whoa. I can actually see that pin wobbling. That is a lot of run out. It's not even maxing out. Gotta go down a bit. Right. With the needle. Oh, yeah. What was that? Something went pop in the garage. Static electricity here. There we go. Oh, I'm maxed out. All right, let it raise it. <laughs> Too high. <laughs> Should be enough. It's almost on the center. Yeah, look at that. Why? That is on there tight, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's about as tight as you can get. Let's run out closer. How close can I go? I just lost it. Ah. Man, it is hard to get that thing right where you want it. There we go. That's, um, shoot, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six thousands run out. Now I have no idea why then. That should have been a thousand. Alright, turn it back around. Interesting here, let me reposition better. I always go the wrong way. But taking these apart, this to the base, this is one piece and this collar just slides on it. So this is all done in a lathe. So it should have been all perfect. That's two thousands, right? There's one, there's two and a half. Almost two and a half thousandths run out. And that, I bet you, it's because that face is off. But I have no idea whether the collar pin is just 
moving like that, the jaws have to be really screwed up in there. All right, well, that's enough. All right, the check's off of it. I should see a half thousand run out. Right, yep, bingo. Half thousand. So, now I gotta set up to look at this face. Yep, I gotta get the camera over there. Alright, as you can see, that face is pretty good. It's probably a tenth of something run out. Is there grease on it? Or dirt? No. So, that's just barely moving. So, which tells me then the back face of this chuck is not machined right, or the threads aren't right, and the chuck's on slightly crooked. <laughs> oh well, I gave up for all of this. Alright, so even Jacob said, so like I said, this is one piece all the way to this face, with just the sleeve over it. So the run out back here you saw, that should translate to the exact same run out here if this bottom uh, surface of the chuck is um, straight. And as you can see, there it is. So even Jacobs is not machining chucks very well. That's quite a bit. <laughs> Either that or this face isn't done right, <laughs> so can't tell anything. So I'm quitting for today on run out issues.